The hype train for Texas Tech continues, this time with an ESPN article predicting the Big 12 standings in 2023. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I am R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And if you're excited about Texas Tech football being just right around the corner and really just college football in general, join the largest Texas Tech community and most interactive Texas Tech community here on YouTube by simply hitting that subscribe button. And while you're at it, you might as well like the video too to have the latest Texas Tech news and rumors all year long right there in your YouTube feed. All you got to do is hit that big red button and turn it gray to stay in the know. All right, let's jump into the latest predictions for Texas Tech. And this one is surrounding ESPN. And listen, I understand their predictions and not everybody's going to like them. It is what it is. But I do think it's cool, and I've said this in other previous videos as well, I do think it is cool, and I do think it's actually kind of a good thing for Texas Tech in terms of getting eyeballs onto the program and the brand when it comes to the Red Raiders this season in terms of the positive things that are being said from national media outlets, whether that's Brett McMurphy at Action Network or Mark Slyball at ESPN. And that's what we're going to talk about today is Mark Slyball and his Big 12 predictions for 2023. He laid out the standings he thinks is going to happen for not only Texas Tech, but for the entire Big 12. And well, one of them is a uh, pretty nice if you're a Red Raider fan. So let's start real quick with the projected standings or the predicted finish of the Big 12 by Mark Slyball of ESPN. We'll start at the bottom. West Virginia and Cincinnati come in at four and eight. Then you've got Houston and Iowa State at five and seven. Then the bowl teams start. BYU at six and six, along with the Jayhawks of Kansas at six and six as well. Baylor at seven and five. Oklahoma State at five. And the only new member of the Big 12 to make a bowl game this year, well, at least be above 500, I should say, is UCF, according to him, at 7-5 and five as well. TCU falls back a little bit in his predictions at 8-4. and four. And then there is a trifecta of teams at 9-3, and three, Oklahoma, Kansas State, and Texas Tech, with Texas going one overall with 10-2 and two in terms of their overall record, and in conference, 8-1. and one. But with that trifecta, of teams at nine and three, there is a clear number two due to conference record, and it is the Texas Tech Red Raiders, according to Slyball, who has the Red Raiders at seven and two in the conference. Listen, this is pretty similar to what I said Texas Tech would do in the Big 12. Now, albeit flipped Kansas State and Texas Tech in terms of who plays in the Big 12 title game, but he has Texas Tech playing in the Big 12 title game against. Texas. Now, this would be interesting for a multitude of reasons. Obviously, Texas last year in the in the Big 12 before they go to the SEC. Texas Tech making a monumental step in terms of year two of Joey McGuire building off of what they did in year one, finishing the year 4-0, and right? But also, these two teams would play in back-to-back -back weeks, and he's projecting that Texas beats Texas Tech in Austin. Makes a little bit of sense, right? But as anybody that watches college football knows – it is hard to beat any team two times in a year. And so when you look at this and you think about the alumni base in Dallas when it comes to Texas Tech, who knows? Maybe there's a shot Texas Tech could win the Big 12 championship game and move on to whatever game that would be. Maybe the Cotton Bowl, like Brett McMurphy predicted, against LSU. But let me know before we get into other things in terms of Joey McGuire being picked to win the Big 12 Coach of the Year. I want to hear from you guys in terms of Texas Tech will finish where in the Big 12 this year? Let me know. Top two, top four, let me know down in the comments below. All right, Mark Schlerbach wasn't done there when it came to predictions and a positive one for Texas Tech as he picked Joey McGuire to win Big 12 Coach of the Year in 2023 interesting because you could make an argument for sark with his predictions in terms of the overall predicted standings that he has but all aboard the joey mcguire hype train right now uh because it is picking up quite a bit of steam and a lot of national pundits including 24 7 rivals espn the action network cbs so on and so forth are really loving what joey mcguire and crew are doing out in the 806 again 
First, Brett McMurphy, in terms of a positive Texas Tech prediction, he had them in the Cotton Bowl against LSU, as I mentioned. And now ESPN predicts Joey McGuire will win Big 12 Coach of the Year. And for me, when you look at this, right, there's a lot of positive things to take away from this. Obviously, the biggest takeaway from this when it comes down to Joey McGuire getting this prediction from ESPN is obviously they're doing something right, right? Like Texas Tech has to be good at football this year and not just good, great at football this year in order to receive this kind of even prediction, right? Like he thinks Texas Tech is going to be that good. And we talked about his prediction in terms of the Big 12 standings. He's got Texas Tech in Arlington playing Texas for the Big 12 title game, right? So you think about that. But there's also a lot more involved in this in terms of just strictly what happens with Texas Tech on the field. There's a lot going on in terms of Joey McGuire getting a lot more recognition for what he's doing at Texas Tech. You think about what's going on off the field in terms of the recruiting aspect of things, all the positive media really reports of this program right now. And not to mention, you've got $220 million going into that stadium. And oh yeah, you play Oregon in week two on national television, right? There's a lot of positive vibes right now. And I get it, vibes don't win football games. Players do when it comes down to it on the field. But you look at what Texas Tech has And it feels like both of these things aren't too far-fetched for a multitude of reasons, okay? Again, 18 returning starters from the Texas Bowl last season, right? That's a ton of production coming back. You lose a guy like Tyree Wilson, yes, no doubt about it, but you get to replace him with a guy like Steve Linton, Miles Cole, and your front four on your defense is arguably the deepest it's been in the past decade. Not to mention, on the other side in the trenches, Texas Tech has vastly improved on the offensive line, has a former All-American and Cole Spencer now at left guard. Rusty Sachs is one of the most underrated offensive linemen in the country, not just the Big 12. And now you get to use guys at their more proper positions, like Dennis Wilburn. He was playing center last year, was arguably your best player on the offensive line. You move him to his more natural position at right guard. Now Caleb Rogers is at right tackle, and Monroe Mills shifts to the left side. I really like what Texas Tech has in the trenches, and for me, that's where football games are won because you know Texas Tech is going to put ungodly numbers up when it comes to the scoreboard with an offensive coordinator like Zach Kitley and regardless of who the quarterback is when it comes to Tyler Shuck and Baron Morton. You got plenty of weapons on the outside and your running back room is deep as hell too with guys like Taj Brooks who will have a significant snap increase this year being the quote-unquote guy now. But you also got a guy that's a home run hitter in Cameron Valdez back there as well, not to mention Bryson Donnell. When you look at the complexity of this roster for Texas Tech, it makes a ton of sense because, again, what wins in college football? Simple and plain. Experience, good coaching, and dabble a little bit of pinch of luck in there, right? And if the bounces go their way, Texas Tech has those two things. They've proven it time and time again with Joey McGuire. They make the right decisions game in and game out, something they hadn't done in previous regimes. And, oh, by the way, they're old as hell as well with this roster and how many of these guys have played high-level football. Think about this, okay? The projected starting 22, 11 on offense, 11 on defense, right? There are only four players, four, that are not seniors, Okay, think about that one more time. Only four of 22 players for Texas Tech projected to start for the Red Raiders in game one against Wyoming up in Laramie are not seniors. And only one of them is a sophomore, and he's a red shirt sophomore, and he's your best wide receiver in Jerron Bradley. You have experience at a high level if you're Texas Tech. You have super seniors due to the COVID year, and you're deep as hell on both sides of the ball. These predictions seem steep to the outside naked eye that probably isn't paying attention to Texas Tech. And I get it because Texas Tech hasn't done anything to deserve this in terms of the past decade. But this is a new regime in Joey McGuire. They proved what they could do last year going eight and five, ending the year on a 4-0 run in terms of games one in a row. They dominated the Texas Bowl against the good old Miss team, albeit missing a couple of players. But you could make the same argument for Texas Tech, right? Texas Tech is in a good position to make things happen, and it is awesome to see from just a Texas Tech perspective them getting some national media love because rightfully so. They haven't deserved it in years past, but this year they do. This is an experienced, deep football team that has a chance to really shock some people that aren't paying attention to what's going on with Joey McGuire and crew out in the 806. All right, before we get out of here, I've got to ask you this. 
Will Joey McGuire win Big 12 Coach of the Year? Just a simple Y for yes or N for no. And hey, while you're at it, if you want to help support the show, we're giving you daily videos on Texas Tech all year long. Click that donate button. It's a heart with a cash sign. And I'll be sure to answer your questions. And if we get enough, I'll be start doing lives as well here about Texas Tech and doing them weekly. But hey, it goes a long way. And we really appreciate you guys helping the channel here at the Back to 12 podcast channel. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech football all year long. We're getting ever so close. Only 12 days away from kickoff for the Red Raiders in year two of Joey McGuire up in Laramie, Wyoming. So you're going to want to stay in the know. And all you have to do is simply hit that subscribe button to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.